So we're here at the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum and we have the 2414 uh, and we're going to shoot that lens today and uh, I'm going to get you to think a little bit different about it. Of course it's a wide angle lens, um, you know you can use it for landscape of course, uh, architecture, uh, astro, uh, even portraits. You know you can use a wide portrait lens but but have you ever thought of using it as a, as a close-up or almost, dare I say, a macro lens? It's not really a macro, but the neat thing about this lens is that it'll focus, I've measured up to about five inches. At five inches, it will focus on something. So I want to just give you sort of a, a different way to look at it, right? So here we are, um, I'm going to go ahead and record. So here we are looking into the camera and I kind of have it framed uh, with this pergola and then these beautiful uh, pinkish, purplish trees. Um, and so I have kind of the framing that I want, um, twisted just a little bit and it's a little hot and that's a great thing about Sony with live view, you can just adjust it. So I'm just adjusting the shutter speed right now. As you can see, I'm at a 400 ISO wide open at 1.4 and then get it down to kind of just what I like, you know, take a pick, good, take another pick, can darken it a little bit. Sometimes it's best to use your histogram so you make sure. So I'm going to pop up the histogram here. Oh, that's not what I want. Off histogram, It'll go through the screens, and there's the histogram. So the histogram looks good. If I brighten it up, it moves over that way a little bit. I think I like that. Take a picture. So now you're looking at a wide scene, but and that's kind of how most people would use this lens. Like I said, let's use it as a close up lens. So look in the lens, I see this beautiful red Japanese maple over here. And so I'm going to get right in here. Pull back just a little bit. I'm still including the fence. Let's go over this way just a little bit. There we go, a nice beautiful close up. So this, the nice thing about this is that you see the leaves. I've kind of chosen a side angle because there's fence behind it with pattern. And so you have these beautiful Japanese maple leaves, nice red with this late afternoon light. Right now it's about uh, 8.15 if I were to guess here in Minnesota. And it stays light this time of year until about uh, 9 o'clock. So I'm like, I just switched the lens to manual focus. That's a great thing about the lenses that have the on, manual on and off on the lens because I can keep it on continuous focus, but then on the fly, if I want to take it off and manually focus, I use focus peaking a lot in the Sony. Um, it's hard to see on here because once you put this Atomos monitor on here, the focus peaking goes away. So it doesn't, I can't show you quite as well. So I'm just focusing to, to my eye, but you know, at 1.4, there's just a really nice depth of field. Everything's soft in the background. But I mean, did you ever think about using this lens for something close up? I think most people would probably want to use a macro or uh, I don't know, like a, a 24 to 70, maybe a 35. But a 24 lens wide open, you know, is, is a really, uh, pleasing effect. I, got, I used this lens uh, at a wedding the very first time I shot the lens, I forgot my macro and I was like, great, I got to do a ring shot. So I did this really interesting ring shot uh, where I had uh, my second photographer hold it uh, on the makeup brush and then I held it over and just manually focused and sort of rocked up and down until I got focused and got it and underneath it, as you can see, is the makeup artist's uh, makeup and the different colors. So it kind of worked out really well. So the reason that the shot was unique was because if I were to have done that shot, even if I composed it in everything the same way with a macro lens, you wouldn't have seen everything. You wouldn't have seen all the different round circles of the different makeup color from the makeup artist. Um, you wouldn't have seen that because the macro lens focuses so closely that you're really just seeing the detail in the ring. So here, you see the detail in the ring as well as what's in the background. And that's sort of the idea of what we're doing here is you see the detail of these pretty red leaves, but you also see the background of the fence. So let's take just a couple more. 
I'm gonna reframe it just a little bit. I'm kind of big into composition. Um, if you ever watched one of our episodes of Power of Simple, it's all about composition. So you can see by I'm about 800 shutter speed, 1.4 at 400 ISO. But remember, we're at 1.4. Now, if I focus the other way, and I focus on the, the gate in the background, then the things go out of focus. But I much prefer this. It's such a beautiful, like watch it go from back to forward. So let's do one more example of that. So I just walked over here. Now I'm under the trees. Uh, again, it's late in the day and the light's really soft, uh, but you can, you can see it so beautifully as you can see on the camera screen. Uh, and again, with the live view, I can adjust it. You can see it get really dark. One of the best things about Sony is the live view. So if those of you who don't shoot Sony, um, one of the reasons it sold me on it, you, as you adjust your exposure, so right now I'm adjusting the shutter speed, 200, 250, 320, and you can see it get dark and get light. But I'm also watching my histogram. Um, that's probably right there for me. So I have the shot lined up, take a picture, you know, again, pretty landscape. And again, that's what you might think of using this wide angle lens for, or wide angle lens, whatever you shoot. Um, but then let's go find uh, a closer up version of that. So I am just playing with the focus because I want to see actually how close I can get. So here looks a little bit too, too close, a little bit, but I'm roughly, that looks to be about six to seven inches away. And again, I'm including the pergola in the background, kind of like the opposite of what we did before. Um, focus on it, take a quick picture. I realize we're shooting flowers here. I don't usually shoot flowers, I shoot people. But again, for this purpose, I want you to see no matter what you shoot, um, even if you're a product photographer or a food photographer, this might be really interesting for food because you can get nice and close, but you get everything. So I have the real vibrant colors, this late afternoon light. Can see if we can get a little closer. Yep, I can focus. I can focus right in here. I measured, it's five inches, we'll, we'll show you. Um, but I measured and I tested it. On the Sony website, it says uh, about nine inches that the camera will focus, but I was focusing on something in my studio today and uh, it was five inches. I, I measured it and then I took a piece of string and touched it to the object that I was looking at and then to the lens and then I cut it. So about five inches. But again, here's, here's just another interesting example. So again, I'm roughly six, seven inches away from this leaf um, and I'm using the path as like depth of field. So I have leading lines coming in into the frame. Uh, I'm using rule of thirds where I have the flower that I'm focused on to the right of the frame and then the other lines are, are coming in but they are out of focus because again I'm at 1.4. So just watch as I zoom in and out. So now you see the path very clearly. You see the sign in the background a little bit but as I come back this way and I come to focus all the way, I don't even, I can get even closer because I'm not even at infinity on the tight shot. I mean, right, right about there. It's really out of focus. That's another thing when you're shooting close. Um, you know, most people tend to focus the camera, which of course that's what you're supposed to do, but you can also move the camera. So sometimes when I'm shooting a macro lens, um, you know, that's how I'll do it to get the focus, but watch as I just move the camera in and out, then I can dial my focus in exactly like where I want it. And again, if I wasn't using this monitor, I would be using focus peaking and I would see exactly where my focus is. If you don't know what focus peaking is, if you don't have it in your camera, it's kind of like zebras, 
um, you know, where it shows the highlights are blown out, but it, it highlights the area. And the Sony cameras, especially with the new firmware upgrade, uh, now there's blue. So there's blue, red, yellow, and white. And you can choose uh, the color that you want the focus peaking to be. And you can turn it on or off. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. Uh, but it's a really great, I use it all the time because I focus manually a lot, even at my weddings. Now, with all this said, this, I, this isn't replacing my macro lens. The macro lens has a very specific purpose. If I want to show a very close detail of the ring, I'll do that. But sometimes now that I did it, when I used it, you know, was the only lens that I had at the wedding that I mentioned before, when I use this lens sort of as my macro, now I'll kind of do it two ways. Like I'll shoot it with my macro and then maybe I'll shoot it with this. It all depends on what I can put in the background. And that's really the benefit of using a wide lens to shoot close up because you can focus on something very close up, but then you can see what's in the background. So think about that when you're composing your shot or when, it, or when you want to use this as a close up lens. It's, it's what's in the background. How can I enhance what I'm shooting close by what I'm putting in the background? <laughs>